It should be like this though. It should just start like this instead of being all serious. We're just gonna keep it like this thing because instead of going. So guys, today we're gonna start off by Ooh, are we being serious? No, we start this again. <laughs> I, don't like I had to pick the worst question. <laughs> <laughs> so we're four weeks post Olympia and I'm going to answer some questions what I put out on my Instagram account uh, to you guys which you have asked me about <laughs> what is wrong with me I sound like an idiot uh, can't wait to meet you in Durban any tips for young men's physique athletes um, so for me personally if you're new to competing I would go and have a look at shows before you compete in them. So have a look at what federation you want to do and what class you want to do and go and have a look at what's winning the class you want to, to, to take part in. So for me, I went and looked at shows before. I was looking at the Olympia um, and the, the American guys and looking at what was winning those shows. So have a look at their stage presence, their muscle mass, uh, and then put a plan together by comparing your physique to their physique. So see if there's improvements, what you can make. And I think personally, you've got to be your own worst critique. You've got to really rip your physique apart because then it gives you that drive to, to improve it and stuff. And, and think, right, I need more mass. So then, then you can put a plan together and think six months time, I'm going to be on stage. So the next three months is about growing time, improving on those weak muscle groups. And then we've got three, three months of dieting down and, and showcasing it. So, for me, it's all about preparation. So if, you, if you're new to men's physique, prepare before you go on stage. Anything to say? <laughs> a <lot of> physio. <laughs> Every week, make sure you do physio. Well, no, joking aside though, that is another thing. Yes, of course. There um, in the early days of me competing, I um, or early days of me training, I never did physio. I just thought I was indestructible. And the moment I started getting injuries, um, that's when it became apparent that physio is absolute key. So we work once a week, don't we? Uh, as we get closer to a show, we, we normally uh, add another session, in, so twice a week. Um, and I, I feel a lot better training. Um, my mobility is a hundred times better now, isn't it? Uh, we're just trying to keep injuries at bay. The thing with that is because you've got a time limit. Yeah. So if the show's 12 weeks out, you have 12 weeks to prep. Yeah. And if you get injured four weeks, five weeks in, mm. it puts you back. Yeah, massively. Exactly. So yeah. they're they're the most important, you know, like the twelve week prep. Time. But even even outside of prep as well, on your off season, it's important, isn't it, to just keep on top of it. Um, and that's what we're we're starting. Obviously, this week I've missed a couple of weeks, and already I feel tighter. We've got the thoracic what the camera's uh, <laughs> balanced on, which we're going to be nailing later. I'm sleepy. Say something motivating so I can get my ass to the gym on that day. Just stay in bed, mate. Yeah, rest is key, mate. That's rest when you. <laughs> that's when you improve when you're resting. Uh, so the next question: What's your peak week like, and how do you dry out before stepping on stage? Um, so for me, peak weeks are very specific to the individual, um, and it's quite a widely spanned topic to talk about because what works for me wouldn't necessarily work for the next guy. But I've always gone on on the basis of dieting down over twelve or sixteen weeks making sure I'm as lean as possible. And then I'll run in for the first three days of peak week, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, medium carbs, medium protein, uh, low fats. I'm a guy who prefers higher carbs, uh, lower fat diets. Um, and then I'll do a depletion circuit Thursday morning, and then we'll start to carb load Friday, Saturday. And this isn't carb loading to the point where you're going up to a thousand grams of carbs for two days. It's going from say 250 to 300, up to about 500 to 800 and as we taper up. Um, I personally don't feel like you need to do anything too drastic because most people who diet or get ready for a show, they love the way they look two weeks out or a week out from a show and they're looking in the, the gym mirror. Yes, they're flat, but they know they can see everything firing and they're lean. So why do something drastic on that peak week what could, could mess it up, i.e. messing with your sodium or your water? So if you're new to it, keep it simple uh, i dry out 24 hours before depending on where i'm at this is in the uk when it's a bit cooler in vegas for the olympia i cut my water at six o'clock uh, the night before and i'm normally on stage for about half past ten in the morning um, and i start to incorporate asparagus with every meal um, on those last two days so thursday friday um, i have quite a lot of asparagus which is obviously a natural diuretic 
Um, some people take uh, a dandelion, um, things like that. But me personally, I find that's enough for me uh, for peak week. How do you get abs thick? How do you get abs thick? Wines. Exactly. Same as any other muscle. Exactly, yeah. And that's something I, I would always say. So treat your midsection like any other muscle group. So if you're trying to grow and sculpt them, like you would your bicep, you'd hit them hard, hit them heavy, um, variations of exercises and workout, and then you give them time to rest. A lot of people think, right, I need to train abs after every session all week. And the problem with that is if you're breaking muscle fibers down each day, when are you giving them time to repair before you hit them again? So for me personally, I train them twice a week. Uh, on prep, I might introduce a third time, but more often than not, it's twice a week. And then I'll start to do ice attention as I get closer to the show. But um, within those two workouts, I'll focus a lot on, on weighted crunches, uh, low reps, making sure form's right, so I'm not compromising my lower back or anything, but uh, aiming for even like the six to eight mark and then incorporate own body weight to so higher reps to finish. Um, I like to do a lot of core work, um, like regarding plank, uh, rollouts, things like that, to keep everything tight. And uh, especially on stage, that's one of the, the key points for men's physique is, is the midsection. So, um, anything else? Two good ones, always go to myotatic crunch, uh, and then one that they label the cat vomit. What's uh, that one? I don't know what that is. It works a lot more in the diaphragm. So again, oh, when so you're breathing, so you're breathing in. Is that when you're on all fours? Yeah. 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 Looking like a cat. Yeah. So, like vomiting. Oh, I'll never hear you know that one. <laughs> I think we need a demo. Come on, Joe. Yeah, go on, Joe. <laughs> demo that. What should I do if I feel like I have a cold flu and I don't want to rest from my workouts? I wouldn't train. You wouldn't? No. What about you? Would you train if you got flu, man flu? Not train anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, it, I've, I've tried it if you're feeling under the weather and you try and train it just makes you feel worse yeah it's weird because I, I'm, I'm on the fence with it because if, you, if you're really 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 bad and like obviously you're not getting the nutrition because that's the main thing is your immune system's shot that's why you've got the flu yeah. into it uh, but most people one they're getting dehydrated because they sleep most of the day in bed and they're not dehydrated and two they're not getting the food in they would normally because they're sleeping most of the day and stuff. So there's no point going to try and hit a big session and work through it if you haven't got the calories in, if your immune system down because you're dehydrated. Yeah, exactly, because you're not going to get the best out of the workout. And you could even make it worse, couldn't you? Yeah. But then on the other side, from personal experience, after a couple of days of being in and feeling sorry for yourself, you can you can get into a bit of a spiral and just and I found sometimes by just Sucking it up and <laughs> going to the gym, I've uh, it's pushed me through it and sweated it out. So yeah. I think, yeah, the sensible part of me is saying don't just rest. Yeah, yeah. yeah work through it. Rest is. Key. What is your favourite cheat meal? It's not a bad shout. So mine has to be. Um, it's very specific. Go on, I bet you can answer it. Well, the cheesecake factory. Though. Yeah. Smokehouse Burger, Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, Smokehouse Burger, Cheesecake Factory. Oreo Milkshake. Oreo Milkshake. Yeah. But what fries? Sweet potato. Yeah, I yeah. guess that was yeah, right. It's got Unbelievable. Never had a bad one yet. We're going to answer one more question because we could sit here for ages and talk. We need to go and train. Um, what is your plan for off season? So the big plan for the off season is to grow. Um, we've put a plan together. Me and Neil actually spoke last night on Skype call and we are going to hit 2020 hard. I've had the last two years of trying to have an off season, which have not been productive in the fact that I've been injured, obviously the hip surgery and stuff like that. So this year it's all about trying to grow for the next four months. So we're going to go into the new year, um, trying to grow and then we're going to put a plan together for May of next year, which will be the Pittsburgh Pro and New York Pro. So I have to be bigger. There's no point in me turning up conditioned anymore. It's not going to cut it. Um, it has done for the past few years, but it's never going to give me that first place. So in order to, to fight for that first place, I have to be rounder, bigger, all over. Um, so Neil's putting a plan together as we speak. Um, we're going to try and grow in that four months, hopefully no injuries and we're keeping on track with everything. And then we'll start the diet ready for um, 
for the Pittsburgh Pro and New York Pro. Um, going to stay out in America for a bit, training out there, training with Flex Lewis uh, down at Dragon's Lair, and then look at the Olympia. Obviously, I've already qualified, fortunately enough. Um, so, so there's no pressures in that point. It's just trying to improve this physique now because I've never ever done an off season. I've never wanted to to have an off season because I like to stay lean most of the year, and I never wanted to be the biggest guy in the room. I was always happy with aesthetics and shape. Whereas if I, like I say, if I want to win the Olympia, I need to add that size. So uh, that's the plan. And that's the sole plan. There's no more uh, weddings, no more house builds, no more hip surgery. It's all on uh, getting that Olympia title. Thanks for watching. Back than light. <laughs> you don't need light, we need calories. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. Well, I still can't help myself. Subconsciously, you always go for the healthier option. What you got? Uh, so this is, I'm gonna officially start, not officially, I'm gonna start my prep, my off season prep this week. And I know it looks like plain clean food, but we're gonna try and spice it up. But today we're gonna cook it off. We've got chicken breast, fillet steak, salmon. So I always keep them in my diet, mm. but I will then start putting some crappy food in as well to get the calories in. Uh, I think, well this is what I'm telling myself, is that I've ate so clean for so long, uh, that my body just doesn't seem to, to put body fat on easily. So I'm going to go to the dark side, put some bad calories in. Probably 75%, 25%, so 75% clean, 25% dirty, just to see if we can slow the metabolism down, get this growing, get these muscles growing. <laughs> so we've got some food challenges coming up then, I reckon. Yeah, definitely. We've got to do some food challenges because. I know Ross Edley has literally this week just asked if we can have a burger challenge. Um, I've never tried this 10,000 or 20,000 calorie challenge, so it'll be interesting because I've always said I've got a good appetite, but it's high volume of clean food. When I start eating junk food, I could be a whole new ball game. So uh, yeah, up for trying that. You'll have to watch that in a few videos to come. So now we're going to prep. I've got my pasta, tuna. This is my pre-workout meal and we'll be training back later with Dan so oh father-in-law that's why I have to speak posh <laughs> 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 no, I think the priority so we don't need a table and chair we don't need a sofa we need a toilet holder and another toilet holder <laughs> so this is my job for later today then or you like it? <laughs> Fitting stuff. <laughs> DIY. I can try. Is it Craig and Ryan? <laughs> oh no, no, no. So we've been talking in here and this is what he's decided to do. Look at him. Sulking now. Kind of looking forward to getting back on track. So I've had how long we had now? I've had three, four weeks just eating absolute junk. And I, to be fair, I've never done that, and I've never advised doing that after a show. But it has been good mentally. I've enjoyed it, just switching off. It's like had fun on your honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was awful. That was. I couldn't believe that 16 weeks it took me to diet down, like we said, didn't we? To get as shredded as possible. And then it, less than probably four or five days of eating a lot of calories. It's just gone back to square one. <laughs> and I was like a gobsmack. So the Instagram stories just coming back from the buffet with like plates. And, uh, the thing is, everyone wants, me to sh everyone wants to see my off season. And I, I think I'm going to show people my off season physique, but no one wants to see that. They're going to be well disappointed. <laughs> Not like the Michelin man. <laughs> I think oh. people want to see that. You think? It shows you're human. Yeah, but I'm not human. <laughs> no, I am very human at the minute. Rocky, come here. Good lad. <laughs> not happening. Can do it a few times, and then um, we'll just 
Finn Gogh. Gut? Gut. <lacht> Been buying new toys. <laughs> yeah, Amy's gonna kill me. We haven't even got a second bed, we haven't got a sofa or a dining table and chairs in there yet. Um, or anywhere to sit apart from these two settees. But yeah, we've got a decent TV now. We just need to get it wall mounted, um, which hopefully the bracket comes tomorrow and you're gonna help me with. <laughs> I hope. Another gadget. Wedding present from the Gymshark family. Uh, yeah, TV surround system, and then we've got two speakers for the gym and for the kitchen, and then we've got the big subwoofer here. It just feels quality, this does. Right, you're doing this, I'm cooking. I'm gonna make chicken and rice. Craig, you do this. Because <laughs> I'm not good at this sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's just some weight on this. Proper weight. If it's good enough for Ronnie Coleman, it's good enough for me. I'm struggling. How did you get that in so quick? I've been bulking for years. <laughs> I've been hanging around with Ross too long. <laughs> mm. Bear with me. I'll get it. <laughs> What's it saying? I don't know. I hate technology. <laughs> Please confirm this is the speaker you would like to set up. This is the speaker, yes. Bah. Yeah! Bah. Oh no, I've just turned it off. This bad boy is something I've wanted for so long, a Theragun. I've just never found the time to go out and buy one, to be honest with you, but uh, very fortunate enough that Theragun very kindly sent me this um, to try out. So obviously with the hip surgery, um, I've been struggling quite a bit with my hip and the recovery process, and they are assuring me that this will, will massively help getting deeper into into the, the hip, uh, trying to release the tension around my hip as much as possible, especially my glute, my piriformis muscle, uh, and my quads. Um, so, yes, let's check it out. I've heard it's been personalized as well. Whoa. So this is the king of guns for uh, recovery, so. Check that out. It's a Theragun Gymshark collaboration there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Johnny's been sacked now. Got no, <laughs> got no need for Johnny now. Oh. That is awesome. I could use this post or pre or any time of the day really but it's actually quite good a lot of people think deep tissue stuff like that is better post workout and it, and it is nine times out of ten but if you're feeling very tight from the day before or anything like that you could always have half an hour before you go and train just get blood around uh, your joints and just get it warmed up before you go and hit that muscle part so uh, i might have a quick go on this before we go and hit back Tell her. Yeah, yeah, Amy's uh, opened another one. I think she's on tropical banana, tropical something. I'm on Wade Teller, good old trusty Wade Teller. That's it, pre, intro, post. 
<laughs> First exercise, parallel lap pull down, and we're doing three feeding sets, so three warm up sets. Uh, then we're going to do a heavy set of six, and then a deload set, and then a drop set. Start to get that sweet bottom. Three. And four. Four. Keep going. Five. Right, six, seven, eight. Let's do it. That's all, right, isn't it? Yeah, eh? yeah. So a deload set. Jelly there. <laughs> We're doing four reps, rest pausing for 10 seconds, another four reps, 10 second rest for it, and we get what? 16 reps in total. Yeah. We'll just back up with the wheel out. <laughs> Go on then. Right. So four reps. So one, two, three, nice and slow. Go on then. Oh. Nine. Ten, let's go, last four, come on, strong. One, come on. Two, look at Olympia back, let's do it, come on. Three, starts today. One more, go. Two sets to six, maximum weight. So it's the same concept as the first one. So we're doing two essential warm-up sets, 12 reps. Then we go heavier for how many sets? Six to eight reps. Six to eight reps, one set. Maximum weight, yeah. Maximum weight. Followed by a deload set, which is 10 to 12 reps. From. Go. Very good. So last set we're going to do a triple drop set, so six reps, drop, six reps, drop, and then burn out if I've got something left. Oh. 
it's that, that's going to be too deep. There's too, too much tension on what we're down. It's going to be bouncing up. Come on. Three. Oh. Come on, Dad. Go. Five. The hell, fuck. Come on, keep going. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, let's go. Oh. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Failure. Two sets of twelve, like warm sets. This set's going to be uh, as heavy as set, so one set of six. All be well. Go on. Three. Three. Oh. Drag through, drag through. And again. Come on, finish. Two more. Yeah, let's do it then. Strong. Uh, and again. All you. Come on. Uh. Three. Uh, stop controlling them. Come on. Uh. Uh. Right, uh. Slow now. Come on. Uh. Two more. Four. single arm machine row but we're just standing uh, really good really really good try to get your chest support onto the pad make sure you're driving all the way through and they're not swinging tired
did uh, three sets heavy to failure, so one moderately light, two plates, up to three, two sets as heavy as we can. Just going to finish on lower back, which is hyper extension. Uh, this is my first proper back session since uh, the Olympia. I had like three or four weeks off post Olympia, so we're not going to be doing like deadlifting or any comp. Um, compound lifts, you're just going to be doing nice and light hyper extension, activating that lower back. Are you using weight? 